All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about a new form of level optimization through the use of anti-portals. So what exactly is an anti-portal? Well, an anti-portal is a convex volume that occludes, which simply means that, say you had a uh, box-shaped anti-portal, and it was blocking your view of something. Whatever it's blocking your view of will not render. So you say that they're convex objects. So... Now, this could get confusing to a lot of the beginners. So what exactly is a convex object? Well, the opposite of a convex object is going to be a concave object. And honestly, you can get on the Internet and you can find huge, long, lengthy term papers by the really intelligent people just describing nothing more than the difference between concave and convex objects. I mean, descriptions that will go on forever and ever. So I'm going to try to simplify this down to just like maybe a minute's worth of talking. So to put it in the simplest form, if you've got a piece of paper – and you drew, like, the letter C on one side, and you took maybe a circle on the other side, but filled that circle in so it was all one solid piece. Let's start off with the letter C. If you drew a line, just maybe from the top straight down through, like, right, right the middle of it, that line would enter the letter C, then it would exit it as it goes through the middle, because, you know, a C is kind of hollowed out as it gets toward the center. Then as you leave the bu as you uh, as you're exiting the, cut the hollow point, you're going to enter the letter C again. So that straight line would enter the shape leave the shape, and enter it again. I mean, I guess this example would work for, like, the letter O as well, or maybe a circle that wasn't filled in. Let's go over to the circle. If you drew a line through that, it's going to enter the object once and exit it once. That makes it convex. So if you can draw a line that enters it more than once, it's concave. If a line can only possibly enter it one time, it's convex. Makes sense. A little bit confusing, I know, but, real, I mean, it's, it's the simplest way I can describe it without having a whole bunch of visual aids and things. So with that, basically, it needs to be kept convex so it can be kept simple enough so that it's a fast calculation. Right. Because technically, if it was concave, it would have to be broken into convex objects and so on and so on. Okay. But anyway, so how, how do we go about actually creating anti-portals or using them within a level? Well, if we take a look at where I've got this wall, and if I turn on static mesh display again, I've got this block, but as you saw in the, in the first uh, zoning lesson, this did not occlude. We could look straight through this piece of geometry and see the meshes behind it, at least when we were in wireframes. So they are rendering. Okay. Now, what we want to do with an anti-portal is actually block this area out so it truly does occlude. All right. To create that anti-portal, I'm just going to start out with just a cube, set its height to about 960, the same as I have for that cube, its width to maybe 1024, and its breadth to 32. With that, I'll just move it into place. So in this like case, so. that's going to line up perfectly with the wall that we've got. If Logan can get them to line up. So, now that we've <laughs> got that, to add an anti-portal, it's really very simple. Hit the Add Anti-Portal button. Mm, wow, that was complex. So with that, we can now see the orange outline representing the anti-portal. Okay. Now with that, since it is a volume, technically, rebuilding doesn't necessarily have as much of an effect, but I'm going to rebuild nonetheless, just to make sure that everything is compiled to its final form, and launch the level. Okay. So now with that, with that very simple addition, let me see, R mode 1, good old wireframe. Hey, check that out already. Meshes. And then the meshes are occluded very because cool. of the anti-portal. So really, anti-portals are actually end up being very easy to work with. Absolutely. And also, this would be a, a case where zoning simply wouldn't be applicable to this. I mean, there's no tight area, corridor, opening, doorway, or anything that you would be able to zone. Right. It's kind of like a fully opened arena. Right. But using an anti-portal where you simply take an object, basically, a convex object or volume, and make that occlude instead. Works very well. And in this case, since it's so, such a simple shape, it should be a very simple calculation to decide what's visible or not, thereby saving a lot of speed, since we can easily cut out certain objects, meshes, triangles, or whatever else may be behind, even very, uh, parts of the BSP, as they become completely occluded. That's awesome. That is one other thing to note. It's going to occlude, like, either everything is going to be completely visible or not. For example, some of those meshes, it'll never draw half of a mesh. Okay. Either the entire object draws or it does not. Okay, and that could be a problem at some points because, like, if you've got, like, specific holes uh, in the object that's got an anti-portal going through it, you might see the whole thing just disappear, like, in a flash. Right. Or if you had, like, or tried to make a wiry type mesh or a wire background occlude... Right. That'd be kind of weird because you never, you'd always be able to see parts of it. Yeah, that'd be kind of strange. But um, with that, let me jump back into Unreal Ed now and point out a few of the things you need to watch out for when working with anti-portals. Now, granted, that was very easy and very powerful, but there's some things we need to be careful of. 
if your player can actually get inside of the anti-portal, that can cause bad things to happen. Let me simply move it outside of that mesh, so it'll still occlude all the same. As a matter of fact, we could completely delete the cube itself. Yeah. The anti-portal is going to occlude regardless of where it is, Okay. except that there is one thing to that that I'll explain shortly. All right. Basically, the anti-portal has to be within some part of the sub subtracted space. If you leave it just out in the, the null void that you haven't carved out of yet, if right. the entire portal is outside the level, it won't occlude, even if there is geometry between it. So, like, if we'd had an anti-portal that was so thin that it actually fit completely inside of that little thin wall there and didn't, ha like, come into the level at all, would it work? Probably not. Okay. But here's another thing to watch out for. So we've moved the anti-portal back some, so it should be out here. What happens if I walk or manage to walk into it? Check that out. My entire view has just become a Hall of Mirrors effect. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, technically, it kind of makes sense. You're inside a, an occluding object. Right. So that means everything is occluded. Right. And so technically, hence, there's, like, nothing in the screen right now. So hence the Hall of Mirrors. If I walk out of it, of course, it goes away. But if I manage to sneak back in, then there we go. It's just something you need to watch out for. Make sure that if you have a an anti-portal with any kind of... Uh, significant volume inside of it, make sure that players cannot get within that area. Okay. Maybe surrounded by, a, like, a blocking volume if you have to. Yeah, you could def you could block it off with a blocking volume. Simply make sure that it's the object it's around doesn't jut out into the level or right. anything else. Now, here's something interesting. Let me delete this one out. And let's take a look at a different shape to build the anti-portal out of. I'm going to open up the sheet builder and change this to an x-axis sheet. Set the height to about 960. Again, roughly the same as that cube, or the same as the cube. And let me line that up, but again, leaving it outside of the brush just a little. So, fairly close to it. Okay. Something like that. So, add anti-portal. We do, in fact, have an anti-portal, so let me rebuild and test this out. Testing for two things. One, does it still work as an anti-portal? And two, point out the fact that we really can't get inside of a sheet. Right. thereby avoiding the uh, possible Hall of Mirrors effect. Of course, I'll turn on well, R mode 1. Well, avoiding it up to a point. Technically, though, it would be almost impossible to find that exact one line right. where you'd be inside it, but we do have the occluding effect. We're definitely dropping off stuff we're drawing, so the sheet will work just fine as an anti-portal. Okay. But there's no real area that I... Of course, I can get behind it where stuff starts That's kind of what drawing. I meant. So, like, if we, if we were possible to stand just behind the anti-portal itself and not like a neighboring piece of geometry, then we would get sort of a Hall of Mirrors effect. Right, but again, this is this is kind of different. This is just because it's supposed to be occluding that. We have sections of the BSP, full faces, right. that are completely occluded. So, of course, it's not going to draw those. Exactly. But then again, we're not getting inside of it, so we're, it's like there's no real point where we can obtain the full Hall of Mirrors yeah, effect. Yeah, we, we can't get that full screen HOM effect. So if a corner of, say, a sheet anti-portal was jutting out into the level and players could possibly trip over it, it's probably not going to cause a problem. Okay. So just some ideas when deciding how and where to place anti-portals. So with that, really, that covers the basics of how you create and work with anti-portals. So in this case, would you want to take that sheet brush and just like make sure it's right up against the wall itself? Right. If it was snapped to right about there, it should work just fine. Okay. So with that, you want to run a game test once more or... Uh, actually, I, th I think they get the point, really, by now. So I guess that's going to wrap it up for this lesson. So thanks a lot, everyone.